Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I'm Zahn, the Daddy Dev. I also go by the moniker Title Pending on the Internet. And hopefully, hopefully this all levels out with audio. Uh, so what we're going to be basically talking about in this video is how to get a like 2D sprite, for lack of a better word, as a 3D sprite in Godot. And um, I'll, let me just play this really quick and show you what I'm talking about. Sometimes it's better to see than it is simply to do. Um, this is also coming from Securus, and I will talk about a little, a little bit more about him later in the vid. But basically, as you can see here, it's pretty cool. <laughs> that is really, really cool, right? We have a two-dimensional sprite walking in a truly 3D game, and by doing so, the benefit is we get some awesome shadow effects, and that is what I'll be looking at and talking about right now today. So quickly, right off the bat, there's something you need to know, which is very impressive, and I think is also a beginner mistake when you're looking at Godot, is thinking you need to know how to program or code. And let me show you something right now. There's absolutely no programming or coding in this file. Isn't that exciting? And so what Securus is a master of, I would say, dare say, even though Securus himself would say, no, I'm not a master of anything, uh, Securus is a master of just using in-game engine behaviors. What does that mean? That means simply he did all this by understanding the behaviors of each of the nodes and all the options and cool things that are right here. So before we get in, or as we take apart this file, let's start here at the basis here, which is main, okay? If you look here at the main, um, there's nothing really anything special with the main scene. This right here is also, if I type it in right here, a spatial th node 3D. That's as simple as it is. It's the most simplest node you can have when working with a 3D game. If you're deciding to work with a 2D game, you would start with a node TD. Node 2D, node 2D, but we're not talking about 2D games. We're talking about 3D games, server starting with a spatial node. Yay, spatial, love it. Okay, X. Now what happens here is that we're gonna go down to floor just to check this out really quick. And as you can see here, this is a mesh instance. If you wanna find this, you can simply type in mesh instance. And there it is. Don't do this one. I have no clue what a CSG mesh does. But definitely click this one, which is a mess instance. In this really quick, we'll just break down how I set it up. He's got a material here. He put that material there. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, anything special that we need to know? No, nothing going on in geometry that's special. Nothing in extra materials. Load, we don't have to worry about any collisions or anything like that. And matrix, all this stuff is pretty not really changed. I'm not really gonna get into that. Directional light color, is the shadow is embedded to be um, Hmm, interesting. Is Sarah's gonna be black? I wonder if I can change the shadow here. No. Oh. Yeah, I can I can kind of change the shadow color. Oh yeah, that's really cool. So there we go. I can change the shadow color that's coming off of the light. That's fantastic. But again, I digress. I'm just gonna keep it black for now. Okay. Uh other things you want to take into account. The light is uh color is white. We guess we could change that. Whoa, some cool effects here. Okay. But again, nothing nothing we really want to be messing around with. All right, reset. Okay, all right. Anything else special about this? Bias, not so much. Transform, positioning. That's what this is telling us, position. Translation, again, positioning. Uh, not visibility, of course. We can turn it off. Well, that's going to that's gonna change everything. Night scene right there. All right, everything's kind. Okay, so nothing big there. Within the spotlights, he's made a, another spatial node. And in that spatial node, he has a series of lights. And these lights are then, we can just look at one setup light. And it should be the same light for everyone else. All right, okay, let's see. Zoom, 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 zoom. This is probably light one. I hope this is light one. All right, okay, spotlight, <laughs> spotlight 12, never mind. He started here, and he copied and pasted it away. Uh, light set up again. You can change different colors. I'm not going to really change different colors. Translation. So, again, nothing special here. And, again, if you need to bring up any of these nodes, you can just type in the lights. You can go in spotlight, SPT. That'll bring you a, a spotlight if you spell it right. Or you could put a, again, a directional light, D-I-R, and it should bring up the directional light, so forth and so on. Uh, I don't see anything, oh, there is a world environment. Let's see how that's affected. It's your standard world environment. Doesn't seem to be anything that's changed here, so no worries there, uh, except he did get rid of the default world environment. He made it black, which is cool. Gives it a bit of night effect, uh, enough said. Again, if you have any questions or comments, please put them below. You know what to do, like, hit that like video if you like this, subscribe if you want to subscribe and you're not ready. And if you come back, thanks for coming back to another video where I cover some Godot stuff. Anyway, let's get into the nitty gritty. 
We have the parent. The parent is a girl. The parent is a girl and has two children. Oh my, when will he stop teen pregnancy? That's a terrible dig. Uh, let's look at the setup as how the Sprite 3D is set up. So right off the bat here, it is set up as a texture. And the type of texture you'd want to do if you're doing this method is, well, if you can see it in here, you kind of want to have a Sprite sheet that's on a ping file so it's transparent. Moreover, when we finally go over here, we're going to go to, uh, what's it right here? We're going to go and we're going to probably import it as a new stream. Oopsie. Sorry, I just want to show what type of uh, texture it is. A new stream texture is the type of texture that you want to uh, turn this in or submit it as. Now, I say that with a caveat because for me and my game, the way that I've changed it, I'm just going to be using image textures. But in this case, this is a new stream texture. Now, we go down here. Uh, we set, see this. This is the setup of how you set it up. He's gone by eight fr V frames and HH frames and six frames. We'll talk more about that later. Um, now we're going to go down here. Is there anything else that's specific that we need to know? Not much. But right here under uh, flags, and this is where I messed things up. I was messing with the geometry stuff. I was doing all sorts of crazy stuff. I hate to say crazy, but all sorts of stuff that wasn't giving me the result that I wanted. And then I realized after looking at his example file, here are the settings that we need to know. All right, it's under flags. Now I'm going to zoom in really quick. All right, zoom in really quick. And as I do this, I'm going to turn things on and off. Transparent's going to be off. That's horrible. So we want transparent on. We want shaded on if we want the, the, uh, the 2D sprite, for lack of a better word, the sprite to actually be affected by the lighting. And finally, we want double-sided. And the reason we want double-sided is single-sided will give you this result, which is terrible. It only is visible for one side. As double-sided will give you both sides, so you can actually just flip around, so forth and so on. Alpha pre-cut is the big one. I think I had this disabled. I think I had this discarded and I needed to have OPEC pre-pass. Now again, uh, trying to get this to work myself, not being very scientific, I was doing so many things here that when Securus was trying to help me, I couldn't get to work in my own in-game file. But the solution here is pretty simple, if you can see it right here. Now, a part of this, the camera is a child. We don't really need to look too much into the camera. I don't see there any being anything special, projective. No, nothing special here, visibility. No, pause. Script, is there any scripts? Of course, there's none. All right, uh, is the play frames, and this is really cool. So after you've set up your animations, uh, you get your root note. You can actually click on the frames. You add this frame here, and it'll actually, right here, once it's all set up right, you can actually just, okay, not do that. That's what I was to say. You can just, just change the value here, and you can see, um, uh -huh. let me zoom here, okay. You can change the, really, dog? Okay, there you go. You can see, like, changing the values which it doesn't, I'm not sure why it's not updating right away. Okay, well, that worked better the first time I did this in the video. But anyway, you can see the changing the values is actually changing the position of where the, the frame is in comparison to the sprite sheet. Okay, so that's the thing right there. Uh, again, forgive me, uh, as, as this is trying to be beginner friendly, I hope that everyone watching this knows what a sprite sheet is. If, if not, you can always type in the YouTube search and find a better one. And so how this works with the play frame and everything else when it comes together is this creates the walk, which is really cool. You have the walk animation. Now what happens here is that when I stop this, uh, there's another animation. And maybe it's not the best way to do this. I mean, it's kind of a cheap cheat is we have the move animation here. And this is what's actually moving the character along uh, the path. So we could play this really quick. See, that's what's actually moving the character along the path. Now, the thing about this, again, there is no scripting. But if you, if you did want to make this a little better where you didn't fake it, you obviously would want to have the girl programmed and then program it to like some key presses and do some programming there, some coding. But most of this coding is out there on the internet. And I'm going to do another video about this too where I did talk to some developers who tried to get into Godot and they couldn't find a decent enough tutorial. And the big thing about one of the videos I am planning to do is you know, look at what version of Godot that you're you're using. If you're trying to learn Godot and you're using like an older tutu tutorial, it's unfortunate that a lot of the things in the older tutorials don't transfer 100% perfectly. So I'm going to do a video about this where I do talk about like uh, how to start a tutorial series and why you should stick to that version of Godot uh, when you do that tutorial. 
I will say this, that not everything transfers over to the next version of Godot, but a lot of things do transfer, like understanding nodes, parenting, and why a girl can be a parent in Godot, so forth and so on. Now, I do want to do this a quick shout out to uh, Securus' channel. You can see it right here. I will put a link to it to this when I put the video. Uh, you can look at it in the description below. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, you can ask him questions. He's more of a typer, so you could usually type things to him uh, during his live streams. But he's been very helpful as long as, you know, your questions are reasonable, not rude, you know, just just be a human being. And I want to thank again Securus for helping me out figure this. As this brings me closer to a commercial project I want to release. So insert catchy phrase here. I again title pending. I also go by the name moniker Zon the Daddy Dev. And if you like this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Yada yada yada. And I'll see you on the next one. And I hope whatever project that you're doing is going well. Bye-bye.